Hey guys, it's Lee, and today I wanted to make a video for those of you who are just getting into wedding photography, or maybe it's something that you're thinking about, but you wanna make sure that you are gonna be prepared to be able to you know, capture the day beautifully and to not have any issues or feel like you're unprepared for the day. So that's what this video is gonna be about today. So photographing a wedding, you know, it requires a comprehensive set of gear that is gonna really ensure that you, you know, again, can capture all those special moments and details. Okay, so first things first, when it comes down to cameras, you do wanna have two professional grade camera bodies. When I say professional grade, I mean cameras that have two SD card slides at least. Um, the reason why you wanna have two card slots is so that you can save to both cards throughout the day. That way, if one card fails, you have a backup SD card for each individual camera. Also, you wanna have a backup camera as well. So if you typically shoot with two camera bodies at one time, you need to have at least one additional backup body, okay? And then that doesn't necessarily have to have two card slots, but it's ideal, but you do wanna have that additional body. Now, if you do typically shoot with one body throughout the day, then you wanna have that second body as your backup. So it really just depends on your shooting style, but if you fall into you know a lake or a body of water or something like that, and both of the cameras that you have on your body get damaged, that's why you need to have that extra body. So just something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes down to lenses, now I've heard a lot of stories. I've heard some people that say they shoot the entire wedding day with a 50 millimeter. They say, some people say they shoot the entire wedding day with just a 24 to 70. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I recommend that just from a style perspective, but maybe that's just me. But you do need to have a range of different lenses um, that can really, you know, kind of stand in for different scenarios that you're going to encounter throughout the day because weddings are ever changing. There are different lighting scenarios. There's always going to be something that's going to happen very quickly and you want to have the equipment that can handle all those scenarios. But the first thing I would definitely suggest is to have a standard zoom lens. So for instance, that's gonna be like a 24 to 70 f 2.8. The second uh, sort of lens options I would say you wanna have is at least uh, a zoom lens that is telephoto. So that might be like your 70 to 200. And that's gonna be really great for those candid shots, some of the ceremony coverage and things like that. And honestly, between both of those lenses, you should be able to capture the entire wedding day without any issues whatsoever. You should be perfectly fine. That is just absolute the absolute bare minimum I would say that you want to have. Could you shoot the entire day with the 24 to 70 if that's all you have? You could, but you also gonna, are gonna need to have some backup lenses as well. You do have the option as well as getting some more wide angle lenses, and that might be something like your 16 to 35. That's gonna be really great for capturing some of those group shots, um, some of the dancing photos, some of the venue details as well. Um, and so between those different three groups in terms of zoom, so you got your wide, your 16 to 35, your kind of mid tier, uh, which is, or your standard, which is like your 24 to 70, and then your telephoto, which is gonna be like your 70 to 200. Of course, if you have all three lenses like that, you're gonna be beautifully set up for the entire day. You should have no issues whatsoever. But, you know, obviously it depends on your style, it depends on your budget and things like that. So those are the three, they call those the, the holy trinity a, a lot of times as well. Those are the three sort of ranges that you, if you have them, you're gonna be set with no stress, no issues, okay? Now, some people also, of course, shoot with only prime lenses throughout the day, and they are very comfortable doing that. Um, for me, I have not gotten quite to the point where I can just feel super comfortable shooting the entire day with prime lenses. Um, I'm working my way towards that because I do like the look, but I also feel like that you know, on one camera, I'll have a prime on the other. I'll have a zoom because I feel like things move and happen so quickly. I just want to make sure I'm always prepared and don't miss a shot. And so that's kind of where I'm at currently. But from a prime lens perspective, um, you know, you can shoot with a, a 50 millimeter and 85 and maybe something like a 24 or a 35 and be perfectly fine shooting the entire day. Now, one of the other advantages for prime lenses, of course, is gonna be the fact that you have a lot of control when it comes down to low light situations, which there are gonna be plenty of for a wedding day typically. So that is really the advantage to having prime lenses. Now, I think that for someone who's just getting started, if you had to look at this section of, you know, what's needed when it comes down to lenses, to actually be comfortable, I would say you wanna have at least something that can shoot wide, something that can shoot standard, and something that's telephoto. And that can be a mix of zooms or primes. So for instance, if you are comfortable and you want, you could have a 24 to 70, you can have an 85, 
and maybe a 105 or 135 and that can be perfectly fine or 24 to 70 70 to 200 and maybe something like a 50 millimeter prime so depending on you know that mix just be mindful that you want to be able to cover that entire spectrum if you can do that then you should be okay and not have to worry about scenarios that you're going to find yourself in that might be a little bit uncomfortable just want to pause here really quick if you're finding value in this video go ahead and hit the like button for me also if you haven't already hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this and hit that notification bell to be alerted for future videos now back to the video okay so the next section that i'm going to talk about is going to be flash now when it comes down to flash photography you want to have a strong grasp of flash before you decide to shoot a wedding. Chances are you're not gonna be able to shoot a wedding without flash at all. I think that if you choose to do that, you can find yourself in situations where you're not getting great images, your clients are gonna be upset, and you can possibly ruin the wedding day. So you wanna have a strong grasp of flash, you need to understand how to use it and what situations and all that. So, so on camera and off camera flash are gonna be very important and you wanna be strong at those. If you want to have you know, a decent mix of flashes, for instance, I use Godox flashes. You wanna have a Godox flash that you can use on your camera body. You also gonna wanna have some flash triggers as well, which will allow you to use those flashes off the camera. And if that's all you have to start with, then that's fine. So if you just have, let's say two to three flashes and a, and a trigger or a couple triggers if you're using two bodies, then you can, you can be okay with that. So you can start off with that and be perfectly fine. Obviously you're gonna need light stands, and things like that, but you can use it off camera and be fine. So that is the minimum. The bare minimum is I would say two to three flashes, okay? The next thing that you can have is another lighting system, which I like to use, which is the 8200s or the Godox 8200. They are strobes that are super powerful. They're packed full of power and they can light up most lighting situations that you're gonna need. Honestly, I haven't needed more than 8200s and my on-body camera flashes for weddings that I've been shooting. Now, the next thing that I wanna say, which is related to flashes, is you do wanna have some light modifiers as well. So you do wanna have some soft boxes that you can throw on those off-camera flashes as well. Those are gonna be good for taking, you know, family formal photos, taking bride and groom photos as well. So if you, do, you want those photos that are gonna be super memorable, ones that they really want to frame, I'm gonna put a, a couple shots up on the screen here that I used off camera flash with light modifiers. If you if you have the ability to, um, to take photos like this, this is something that your bride and grooms are gonna be super in love with and they're gonna really love and, and want those kind of photographs. So you definitely wanna have some good light modifiers as well to be able to use. Now the next section is gonna be light stands and um, tripods and things like that. You definitely wanna bring you know a tripod with you I don't typically use a tripod for weddings. There are some scenarios where it's very useful, but bring it with you. Also, you wanna have some light stands as well. And I would suggest that you have at least two to three light stands for a wedding. Um, that should be enough for you um, to be able to set up that off-camera flash that you need. And then also, if you need it for getting ready, photos and things like that, you'll have maybe a third one that you can use. So typically what I do is I have a couple larger Manfrotto light stands that I use. And then I have a really small, cheaper, sort of new, um, newer, you know, light stand that's very light and small that I can use and put in like the room when the bride is getting ready or the grooms are getting ready just to add a little bit of extra light. Um, and I just kind of bounce it off the ceiling. And usually that is just enough light to do what I need it to do. Um, so I would say two to three light stands is what you're going to want to have. Okay, now the next thing is going to be memory cards. You do want to have multiple high capacity and fast memory cards. You do not want to cheap out on memory cards. So you want to have some high quality uh, memory cards. Typically, I shoot with like at least 128 gig cards and that usually gets me through the entire wedding day. Um, but again, I have dual card slots and I have it writing to both of those um, cards at the same time for all the cameras that I use throughout the day. So that is something that I would highly recommend. Um, you definitely want to do that. Next, obviously, you want to have enough batteries okay so you want to have at least two batteries per camera body for your camera day and if you want you can bring your charger as well in case you need to charge some batteries but typically for me i have two a7r threes and i use at least two batteries throughout the day and that usually is perfectly fine so i would say at least have two batteries per camera body for the day and maybe a couple extras if you want to be safe 
The next thing you wanna make sure that you have are lens cleaning kits. You wanna have some cleaning solutions or cleaning spray, microfiber cloths, you know, lens brushes, things like that to keep your gear clean. Um, the reason why you wanna do that is because you just never know the scenarios. You never know the, the, the situations that you might encounter. You wanna just make sure you're prepared. You could, you know, touch the actual lens of the camera. And if you're not paying attention, the rest of the photos you take for the rest of the day with that lens are gonna be grimy and blurry or smudged or something like that. And that's not something that you want to encounter. So you wanna make sure you keep your lenses clean throughout the day. So always have something to clean that with. Now, the next thing you wanna make sure you have is a good camera bag or camera case to take and carry your equipment with. So for instance, for me, I use a Pelican 1510 to carry all of my gear in there. And then I also use a Peak Design sling bag uh, throughout the day. And in that bag, I usually store like my extra batteries, lenses, um, cleaning cloths, things like that. So you wanna have some good gear and good camera bags that you're using as well. Definitely don't cheap out on that. And then when it comes down to backup equipment, I kind of touched on this earlier when it comes down to backup camera bodies. But in addition to backup camera bodies, you also wanna have some backup lenses as well. So for instance, if, you know, like I said, you fall into the lake and you got your 24 to 70 and your 70 to 200 on there and you just fall into the lake, you have an extra camera body, you wanna have some extra lenses too. So maybe a 50 millimeter lens you wanna have, or maybe an older, you know, lens. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be even the best lens, but you wanna have some backup lenses, backup memory cards as well, just in case something happens to your equipment. You always wanna make sure you do that um, because you just, you just never know. One of the things I also do is I have a backup camera flash as well that I just leave in the car just in case my flashes go kaput, something happens, I have an extra flash as well. Make sure you do that. And then next, this is not technically camera gear, but I, I highly recommend that if you're just starting getting into weddings, I definitely recommend that you have a second photographer that you bring with you. This is not something that you have to charge your couples for initially if you don't want to. Um, but I highly recommend that you have a second photographer there with you. That is gonna really take the pressure off of you as somebody who is newer getting into um, weddings. And then also it's gonna be a situation where, you know, you're just gonna have that extra help. Um, it's just gonna make the day go by a lot smoother. So I definitely highly recommend that you use a second shooter as you start to ease your way into wedding photography. Um, it's not something that you have to necessarily do long term, but I definitely recommend that you do it to start. That way you can get very comfortable with photographing weddings and not have to worry about things. The next thing that you want to make sure that you have is comfortable clothing. You wanna have a, a nice comfortable outfit that's very professional. You wanna have very comfortable shoes. And I cannot state this enough, your shoes have to be comfortable. You also wanna have some snacks with you and something to keep you hydrated. So some extra bottles of water, protein bars or something like that. Put those in your camera bag, bring those with you because throughout the day, you're gonna be working, moving a lot more than you are normally. And you're probably gonna find yourself getting very hungry and very parched. And you wanna make sure you're taking time to take care of yourself throughout the day so that you can continue to work at your best and at your highest level possible for your couples. The other thing that you wanna make sure when it comes down to that is you wanna have a backup pair of clothing. So leave that in like an extra bag in your car, just like an extra shirt and pants, socks, the whole nine yards, even extra shoes, because again, you never know what can happen. So there you have it. That is the bare minimum you know, list of gear that you should definitely have as a beginner wedding photographer so that you can take beautiful photos, focus on the couple, not stress about anything and be prepared for any situation that happens throughout the day. So that is my list. If I missed something or there's something else that you would suggest, definitely leave those in the comments below. If you haven't already and you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. This is a new channel, definitely trying to, you know, continue to grow and every like that I get obviously helps to motivate me to keep making these videos. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be alerted every time I have a new video. I appreciate you for watching this one and I will see you in the next video.